special instruction. If you are visiting this church for the first time, on my right, which is your left, which is where, and you have the need to use the, um, the, the, the bathroom. For the female, it is on my right, your left. And for the male, it is on my left, your right, if you have that need. Also, for persons who are coming up to make their different presentation, I just want to take note of the steps and look where you are stepping, please. We don't want any accident. So we are asking you, please, to take note of where you are stepping. You understand? As you make, you come up and go down.
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Meditate on these words. I invite you to open your programs and we are going to be singing the hymn on our program sheet. We speak of the realms of the blessed. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we are very grateful for this moment 
as we celebrate the life of brother Malcolm. Thank you for having loaned him to us. We believe that he has lived a godly life and a full life. But even as the family members mourn, they mourn not like those who have no hope because their hope is in Christ, because he died in Christ. And so we ask in a very special way as we gather here today to celebrate and to reflect and even to project as it relates to the resurrection, we ask that you will be in our midst. We ask that you will embrace us. We ask that the comforting spirit will be with each member. We ask that you will be with the proceeding. May it be reflective of your power, your grace, and your love. And in spite of sin, that we can look beyond that, even for the resurrection. Thanks again for having allowed us to be here. And may at the end, may you and you alone be glorified and family members be comforted in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to have the first lesson followed by four consecutive tributes and they will be unannounced. Ron Lewis, Simone Burchell, the Mount Carey SDA Church and the Mount Carey Church. Mount Carey SDA Choir and the Mount Carey SDA Church. We take them in that order. Verses 1 to 3. This was one of my dad's favorite texts. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Amen. Juliette, Marvin Wendy. Uncle Beres was a man with a big heart, a man of God, always willing to help. I remember one Sunday morning, he popped in to see us and realizing that we'd taken on a rather large project at home to remove a coal fire, he rolled up his sleeves and decided to stay to help us. Five hours later, the job was done, but we would not have completed it without his help. We are so grateful for the times that we were able to spend with you and your family and your home. I thank God for the life of uh, Uncle Berries. From the earliest times that um, I knew him, he was always really supportive to me. Um, he was a role model. Um, many of the things that I have now accomplished in life, uh, I put down in part because of him. Um, the functions that I fulfill within my church environment are because of him. And I just give God thanks. You know, life is like a bit of a jigsaw. Um, many people make up uh, the pieces of that jigsaw. And he was a major part of that puzzle in my life. Um, his legacy lives on in every young person, and there were many young people who warmed to him. So his legacy lives on in, in many of them. My family and I are indebted to him because he and Auntie Loris opened up their homes to us. As a young married couple with a, ch with a child, um, they were always welcoming, 
um, having their home open to us, having lunches uh, with Marvin and Julie and having just a great time. He spent many wonderful times in the garden. Um, he loved his garden um, and he loved having people around. Um, he put himself out. We're running things like the Pathfinder Club, um, ensuring that we had the opportunity to spend time together as young people. These were all things that helped us to develop our relationship uh, with God and with one another. Um, we became a, a real team uh, together. Um, he always put himself out as well in terms of the wider church as well. So we, we give thanks for his life. We think, give thanks for the opportunity that he afforded us to be young people and safe in his presence, um, taking us on camps, uh, having youth club, or as I'm talking, all these things are flooding back into my mind. So, um, Auntie Loris, uh, Julie, Marvin, Wendy, and all of you well wishers, um, we've missed, we're missing somebody wonderful in our lives, and we'll never forget him. Love you all, and sorry that we couldn't be there with you. God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is our pleasure indeed to stand here and to give a tribute in song to our dear brother Malcolm. He was truly a kind and genuine person. And uh, Sister Malcolm and family, we say to you, be strong, keep the faith. And we know that we are looking forward to that grand day when we shall really live with our Savior. So be faithful until that day.
short man but a big man and wherever we were he was so the conference would have seen him even for height right brother malcolm i just see this little piece first the manless man of all the race whose heart is open as his face puts forth his hand to help another puts forth his hand to help a friend he was a friend and a brother a father Anywhere Sister Malcolm would go to do work for church and community, Brother Malcolm was there. He's the go get it, he's the lean on me. Even some of the students who pass exam, Brother Malcolm, unknown to many of you, Brother Malcolm contributed to their well-being. He was just that man, in a little way an icon. And so, this tribute, I hope Sister Malcolm is hearing me because he said, uh, when you talk, I don't hear. So I'm gonna show this one, your husband, was blessed. He helped you in every way he could. You brought some things to Mount Carey. We had the programs, but sometimes we did not have the people. And you go out and you help. The clinic down the road, Mount Carey Health Clinic, they benefited from your work, from your ideas. The soup kitchen benefited very well. I think you're one of those who put much into the soup kitchen. The sewing over yonder, and the senior citizens club, and downstairs, the children benefited because whatever Sister Malcolm did, Brother Malcolm was there. They were open, I'm gonna say the, now, their, their home would be open to all of us, so we go occasionally, and some went often. So, I don't want it to mourn. He had lived a good life, one of worth, Excellent, right? Life he lived. And so with this, we say, thank you for coming to Mount, returning to Mount Carey and loaning him to us. All those children who missed him in England there, we thank you for daddy, right? And so we'll always remember him and we'll cherish what he has done for us. And we'll never let up. Remember, you are in our prayers. So hold strong and continue your life and your livelihood. And as you go back, go with God and be safe on your flight. Friends and families who came to see us and help us. Thank you very much. All right, the choir will do the other part of the tribute.
Continue with the remembrance, Miss C. Hansen. Second lesson, Carla Hansen, grandniece. We take them in this order.
Malcolm is the second eldest of my brother Beresford Malcolm is the second eldest of seven children. His twin sister passed away during COVID. My memories of him is of a, a kind and loving brother. Although he spent most of his childhood living with Aunt Rosie because she asked mommy if he could come and live, mm -hmm. if he could live with her. He returned to the family home when he was an adult. As children, we would tease him because he was short, but I don't remember him ever keeping any argument or having any animosity towards anyone. When he migrated to England, we all lived together at Nine Mansfield Road. We lived peacefully with other members of our community in that home. He eventually moved to London with his younger brother, Milton Dornberg, with his younger brother, Milton, who he was really close to. But we stayed in close contact all the times. Beris, is not, was, Beris was not born an Adventist, but he was around the age of 10. Mommy became a, an Adventist. But when he lived in Aunt, with Aunt Rosie, he attended the Pentecostal church. He returned to live with us as an adult. And like the rest of us, he fully embraced Adventism. Beris was a family man and an active church member who was diligent in all his work. I'm deeply saddened to be saying my goodbyes and would have loved to be physically present with all of you. But health is not my friend at the moment. My deepest condolence to the immediate family, Marvin, Julie, and Loris. I want to sincerely thank everyone for helping my sister-in-law in her time of need. For my kind words, to support, for any kind words or support that you gave my, may, that you gave, may God richly bless you all. I, we have this hope that we will meet again, but until that time, sleep on my brother, sleep until the final trumpet sound. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, church. I'm going to be reading 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 14. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and its speed, its coming. That day will bring about destruction of the heavens by fire and elements will melt in the heat. But 
In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless and at peace with him. We continue with a block of tribute and we'll take it in this order. Herbert Anglin, Ray Malcolm, Dana Anglin, Darlene Gladstone and Haddo. We'll take it in this order. Yeah, I must say that Uncle Beris, when I was born, he had long migrated to England. Didn't know much of him, but he came back on vacation, and I had a chance, sorry, I had a chance of interacting with him. And then I migrated, and then he came back to reside here in Mount Carey. And when I would visit him, I always remember I would never leave without he giving me something from his garden. He was very kind, uh, a very direct person. He would never mince his words. You know exactly what he was saying. But I do remember him loving Two sports. One of his favorite was boxing. I stand corrected. The other was cricket. We would sit and we talk about West Indies. And you know, I always remember his kindness. Have a a, a very dry sense of humor at times, and we'd always interact. We're on the phone with Auntie Loris the same day when he passed. In fact, we were talking, and when she went back to check, he was gone. And then he called me and said, do you know, while we were talking, he must have passed? And I tried comforting her. Today, Donna and I have put together a tribute in the form of a litany. I hope you'll enjoy it. In the game of life, amidst the cheers and the challenges, a game of cricket was being played. At the wicket stood a remarkable batsman, Barris Malcolm, whose mastery over the game was legendary. Barris Malcolm was a master batsman, wheeled his bat with finesse and grace. His aim was a hundred runs, the elusive century, the coveted milestone every batman dreams of. And, and yes, yes, he played, played well. well. He was never caught out, because with a stroke of brilliance, he faced every ball as he navigated life's deliveries. He was not run out, nor stumped out, because with agility and precision, he ran the wicket, each step a testament to his resilience and determination. He did not go down LBW because his amazing eye-hand coordination guided him through every challenge that came his way. He was not bowled out because he knew exactly what to do to protect his wickets. He would have kept going through innings after innings. He, he could, could not, not be stopped. stopped. 
But on the fateful day, February 1st, 2024, as the sun began its descent in the western skies, the ultimate umpire, God, yes, God, himself stepped into the field. There were innings left in the game, and Barris had only reached 95 runs. But God signal bad light. As you all know, the game of cricket cannot continue in bad light. And this heavenly umpire brought an end to various innings on this eternal, eternal pitch. But, but the, the game, game is, is not, not over. over. No, the game continues beyond the boundaries of mortality. In the realms of eternity, Beris Malcolm will bat again. And, and he, he will, will not, not be, be alone. alone. For those, for when he step up to the wicket, all those who play the game of life with equal fervor shall join him in that grand coronation. As we bid farewell to our beloved batsman, let us remember that Beris Malcolm has earned the ultimate reward, the Man of the Batch Award, in the grandest award show known to humanity. So, we may weep, but we can also rejoice in the blessed hope of tomorrow, where we will meet again on that continuation of the game. Beres Malcolm, my dear uncle, played the game well and left a legacy that shall forever live on. Until we meet again on that heavenly pitch, may he rest in peace. Sometimes also called Brother B, as most will know, was our dad, Milton Malcolm's old brother. Our families grew up together in the same house in Chiswick, London, until around 1975. We had very happy memories of this time together, and we'd like to share some of them with you. I'm sure many will recognise the Uncle Berries we described. I remember Uncle Berries had some phrases that became legend and still make us think of him when we hear them today. He would say he was going out the road. Nobody knew where out the road or even what road, but that was where he was going. We didn't know exactly when he'd be back, but he'd say, soon come. And on his return from going out the road, he would often return with some treats or ground provision from the high street or Shepherd Bush Market. Jamaica was always in his heart and we'd get a little taste of Jamaica then when he'd make fried dumplings or saltfish fritters. If Uncle Berries had been born 60 years later, he might have been a cage fighter. He loved to wrestle and would sometimes throw two or three of us around the living room in rough play fights that would have Auntie Lois saying her signature phrase, Berries, you're worse than the children. He would listen on the radio to the great boxing matches of the 70s, feeling every punch and counter as they were described. Uncle Berries loved TV much more than the other adults we grew up around, and this endeared him to us. Of course, sports featured. I don't remember him particularly following any football team, but cricket and athletics and anything else with movement and competition, and especially wrestling. He loved action movies and the TV series from the 80s, the 18. For us, Uncle Beres was a smaller version of Mr. T without the jewelry. He'd amuse us when he'd shout at the TV during the game shows, like three, two, one, and warn the contestants that they were about to lose, they were gonna get the bin. And I remember him frustrating us when he got bored with something and then with no warning would switch the channel. We remember Uncle Beres leading out at Pathfinders and us as a family joining in on the summer camps to Wales and the New Forest. 
those are the everlasting memories that we will have of the time spent with him, the fun, the adventure, and the learning of new skills and a week away on holiday. I remember, as a youngster, being a little frightened of Uncle Beris, but his fierceness didn't go very deep, and he would often have a twinkle in his eye, even when he was telling me off. A kind man who was generous with his time, Uncle Beris would drive us around London and anywhere we needed to go in his vintage Austin A40. We call it vintage now, but back then it was just an old car. But Uncle Beris wasn't proud. If you didn't like it, you could walk. The last time I saw Uncle Beris was in Jamaica, in his garden. He was moving a lot slower by then, and I think I would finally have been able to beat him in a wrestling match. And now his time at the crease is over, and he can retire like one of the legends, Viv Richards, Gary Sobers, Clive Lloyd. He had a good and long innings. Respect and rest in peace, Uncle Beris. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. God is good, and all the time. Um, hmm. I remember living at Uncle Barry's house, and when my mommy said to me that, "Son, you're going to live at Uncle Barry's house," I was saying, "Uh huh." Two things. One, I was happy because I'm going to get the pound money, and two. I have to go to England. But when I go, and I said, Uncle Beres, I need some pound money. He said, no, 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 no. You got to work. By the sweat of your bro, you shall eat bread. Uncle Beres taught me how to work. I said, Uncle Beres, when are you going to send me to England? He said, any day you start work, Kelvin, and you get the money, you can go to England. And believe it or not, it's just last year. I go to England. But I'm going to sing this song. Aunt Larry said he want me to talk. But I want to sing this song because one day we will see Uncle Beres again because grace would always be greater than sin.
so often we must pay. You see how a Jesus is waiting. You don't pay. The tribute I read comes under the caption on your program, Hado. Because you've learned, you might have heard, that this was where Uncle Barris grew up. With his mother's sister, Auntie Rosie. And so, one of his cousins, who was not able to make it, has sent her tribute that I read. Tribute to her cousin whom we affectionately called Uncle Beris. Losing you to death is cruel and painful. However, God knows best. During his younger years, Uncle Beris lived in Haddo, in Westmoreland, with his Auntie Rosie, whom he adored. No matter where he traveled in the world, Uncle Beris always came and visit. After migrating to England, he came back with his beautiful wife and adorable children, and of course, as soon as he was in Jamaica, he made his journey to Haddo and introduced his family to us. It aches our heart that we could not be there to bid our final farewell to a wonderful family man. Our family is broken. A vital link has been removed and cannot be replaced. The eldest of the family has been taken from us. Farewell, Uncle Beris. Sleep well until we meet again. To Aunt Loris, Juliet, Marvin, and all other family members, we feel your pain, and you are in our prayers. Be of good courage, much love. And this comes to us from Cynthia Wagner. We'll now hear from Kinsley Dixon.
Good afternoon. Um, this song that I'm about to sing is done by a group. And because we have so much debt, and I'm so close to Brother Berries, I have to make it here. We sing in his praise through endless day on heaven bright shore. Out on the hills of glory land, so happy and free at God's right hand, we tell of a place with marvelous grace on heaven bright shore. Pilgrim of earth, someday we'll go to live in that home forevermore. We sing in his praise through all the air of every shore. On heaven by shore, there be no dying over there, not one little To dim the eye, and no one up there will say goodbye. We sing in his praise through endless day on heaven bright shore. When I must cross the rolling tide, someone will be on the other side. To welcome my soul to thy fair land, made perfect by love. As I walk up the Milky Way, I see the homecoming in a ray. Oh, great it must be for angels to see a pilgrim come home. On heaven by shore. A tear to dim the eye, and no one up there will say goodbye. We'll sing in his praise through endless day on heaven bright shore. On heaven bright shore, there'll be no dying over there, not one little grave. Land, but wonderful land, not even a tear to dim their eye. And no one up there will say goodbye. We sing in his praise to endless day on heaven by shore. We sing in his praise to endless day. We sing in his Dixon, we didn't miss the choir. <laughs> yes, we did. And then, I don't know how people don't worship. Sometimes we allow other people to frame what worship is about. Worship not only brings down, God down to us, but it brings us up to God. It lifts our spirit, it energizes us, and it gives us hope. 
So you know, Aunt Laris had asked me to give a tribute. So I, 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 I didn't appear on the program, but I want to make sure I don't disappoint her. So, so I'm going to announce the avatar, but I'd like to give a tribute to Barris. Barris was a short man, but had a tall spirit. A spirit of generosity. A spirit that had the ability to succor that which was not biologically his. And that's a unique gift. Because most of us, we can care for our offsprings, but we can't care in the same way with others who are not coming directly from our bloodline. Barris Malcolm had that unique touch. And he was discreet. He was not one who, when he helps, people know. But he, he genuinely, those of us who were on the inside Elder Staple, knew that we could always rely on Barris. When it's harvest, his systematic gift was certain. And when he committed, you can lodge it in the bank even before you get it. And he assisted a number of children who was not his own, willingly unselfishly and, uh, and he used to love a game of domino too I said you how much you have <laughs> and uh, he's sure that he's gonna win he said you how much you have uh, let's play them all um, he had a sharp tongue he was not a hypocrite you could depend on him to give you a sharp word whether it was a rebuke or a compliment and, I, and, I, and, I, and we own pharmacies. I had a little pharmacy on a depressed back street. When you call Hard Street, people tremble. And he was an Englishman, and you know they would target an Englishman. But he would pass several pharmacies, and he would come to support us. And that's a unique gift also. Because at Adventist, we don't always support the, the local community or the redemptive community. But Barris did that when it was not convenient. And Laris, I also discovered that Barry's had a, what the old time people used to say, a clean eye. Because when I look at Aunt Doris, Aunt Doris, I say one in the center. And he must have been bold. I mean, such a short man too. Cause you say Barry's had a clean eye. That's what the old people mean. If you want me to interpret what that means, Barry's had an eye for sophistication and beauty. And he was not afraid to make his request known not only to God but to man and Aunt Laris consider we have beautiful children we can't discredit family we cannot discredit salvation neither and I'm here to say like Paul I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because of the power of God and the salvation I didn't make out that it was bull bull look about 500 percent better looking than what he used to be didn't make out that it was bold. Don't you tell me anything about salvation. It transforms us. Not only transforms us, but it informs us. Uh, let me go back to my assignment. <laughs> so I thought, that was it. My, my, my task is to tell you that here comes a portion of the service when everybody can give and if Barris was here we would give so, so I want us you to give and, and the Mount Carey Adventist Church you said Barris was a boxer man the Mount Carey Seventh-day Adventist Church but um, um, what you said a punch far harder past the middle than its way uh, the church was here we spent seven million dollars last year on outreach seven million we deliver seven thousand dishes of soup every wednesday and on a sabbath they have some madman around here they say they are mad and every wednesday they turn up yet they say they are mad amazing yes we, we operate also a dental clinic come next week you can come you'll get free cleaning free free extractions, free restoration, that's composite restorations, and on the third Sunday also. And we don't ask you if you're an Adventist or you're an Anglin or a Pentecostal, all you need to do is to come. First man to the water gets healing. So we're gonna 
encourage you to give, that we can give more, to lift humanity up and to bring glory to the great God Almighty. We ask the deacons to come forward as we now collect the offering, which is in aid of what Beres and Loris live for, community service, service to the least of these. for that which you have given. O oh, Heavenly Father and our God, we give you thanks for teaching us how to give. Because the Bible tells you, tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you for every person that has given. We pray a blessing upon this offering. May we use it to expand mercy in the closing days of earth's history, for Christ's sake we pray. Amen. We'll now listen to the eulogy by Marvin and Juliet Malcolm.
Good afternoon, church. It's um, one of those times where you, you, you never know how you're going to manage. You kind of go up and down like this as you go through a variety of emotions when your, pa- your, your father dies. And uh, we want to thank you from the outset for coming and joining us in our celebration of our dad's life. Beresford Wellesley Malcolm and his twin sister Merlin Malcolm were born to parents Rebecca Murray and Joseph Malcolm on the 25th day of November 1928. But he was fortunate to have two birthdays, an official and an unofficial one. His mother asked a friend to register him a month later, but her friend gave the wrong month. So he was registered as being born on Christmas Day, 25th of December, 1928. He only used Christmas Day when signing legal documents. He grew up with his mother and older brother, Teddy, and younger siblings, Eric, Milton, and Marcel, until the age of 10. His father died when he was young, and his childhood took an unexpected turn when his maternal aunt, Rosie, from Haddow in Westmoreland, paid a visit and asked and was given permission to take Beris under her wing. The journey from Mount Carey to Haddow, roughly around 18 kilometres, seems like nothing in today's times. But back then, with no car or taxi, they hit the road on foot. Quite a trek for a 10-year-old, even today. While staying with his Auntie Rosie, he attended the local government school, along with both the Methodist Church and the Salvation Army. After leaving school, he helped out on the family farm until he was in his late 20s, when he decided to return to Mount Carey. On return to Mount Carey, he stayed with his mother and siblings, including the latest addition to the family, his younger sister Marjorie, affectionately known as Tiny. By then, all the family had become Seventh-day Adventists, so he decided to join the church as well and got baptised. In late 1958, a certain young lady came from Maroontown to Mount Carey and joined the church. Late 1959, Dad fell in love with her and asked her to be his friend, and she accepted. Shortly after this, his brother Eric, who by then had already gone to England, paid for him to join him there. So, he jumped at the opportunity, leaving his job at the Barnet Sugar Estate in Montego Bay to fly over to England in 1960. Back in the day, it felt like everyone from the Mount Carey area of Jamaica made a pit stop at Uncle Eric's legendary residence, better known as Nine Mansfield Road in Luton. It was like a revolving door of familiar faces and warm embraces. Dad got a job earning just nine pounds per week in Luton from which he saved to pay for his sweetheart, Loris Campbell, who joined him in the latter half of 1961. They got married on the 23rd of February, 1962, and their union bore two children, daughter Juliet and Marvin, who stand before you today. Mum recalls that even though the wages weren't high, the cost of living was much lower than today, and five shillings fed them for a week. Right before Christmas 1962, the UK was hit by the infamous Big Freeze, the coldest winter in 200 years. Dad had an Irish friend who encouraged him to come to London, and their first home in London in Horn Lane, Acton, felt more like an ice palace than a cosy home, with frozen pipes leaving them with no water in the house, and the water board had to open up standpipes in the street to allow the residents access to water, a scene I could imagine straight out of an English sitcom. Still, at least they had the legendary paraffin heaters to keep them warm. In 1966, Dad and his brother Milton bought a house in Chiswick, where the two Malcolm families spent many happy years together. Milton and family on the ground floor, Beresford and family on the top floor. I asked my mum, How would she describe Dad? And this was her response. He was a proud and loving father, as well as a loving, caring, and helpful husband. She said he loved helping in the kitchen, 
And I certainly remember the salt fish or banana fritters that he used to make, or the greater cake, or the ginger beer he used to make, which affectionately we call fire water because of its potency that he typically made at Christmas time. Mum said that we planned and we went out and we played together. And I certainly remember the many times that Glenn and Ray, you heard him on the, um, on the, the, the tribute a little earlier on, uh, having play fights with Dad. Also him taking us to the park um, when we were younger and so many good memories. And who could forget when Dad, Uncle Milton and other Jamaicans got together and told us as youngsters those scary stories of the rolling calf and the three-legged horse. They were good times. Mum also said this about Dad. She said, if I got angry and quarrelled with him, he would just walk away until I cooled down. And then he would come back as though nothing had happened. He never forgot her birthday or her wedding anniversary. My recollection of Dad is, was that he wasn't the disciplinarian. Uh, I can count probably on one hand the amount of times he used the belt on me. Clearly, I was an angel. <laughs> Mum said many times Dad would raise his hand but never brought it down. I guess the threat was sufficient. That being said, if I had a dollar for every time I had the wooden spoon's rod of correction administered by my mum, I would be a rich man today. Dad had a fantastic work, work ethic. Once he started a project, he just kept going until it was finished. I remember him painting the outside of our first home in Hounslow. I was helping, but I will confess, I thought it was never going to end. He never scolded me, he never forced me to continue, he just demonstrated what it means to get the job done and finished it with pride. It did look good. And I'll never forget that, and I've learned to do the same over the years as I've gotten older, and I'm guessing my children have started to see some of that work ethic reflected in myself. He spent 26 years of his life working as a plastic molder in Ranton & Co, alternating weekdays and night shifts. One week days, the next week nights. And it's not until later in life that I truly appreciated the dedication that he had in ensuring that he provided for his family. Growing up, I knew we weren't an affluent family, but I know I had need of nothing. On the other side of work, my dad had another skill that I can say that he truly mastered, and that was sleeping. Whether it was in front of the TV with a remote control in his hand that he never seemed to relinquish, or at the dinner table straight after dinner where he just seemed to... and sleep. Dad loved growing vegetables, and we always had an abundance of tomatoes, sweet corn, cucumbers, peas and other vegetables to enjoy. He was also a very generous person, and I'm sure that there are those of you here today who have been the recipients of the yam, callaloo, and other provisions from his garden. Dad was also a creative person with hobbies such as basket weaving and rug making, and he also did many DIY projects around the house. In the mid-70s, we joined a number of other families who were living in the area and formed a branch from the Chiswick Seventh-day Adventist Church in Hounslow. We have many happy memories growing up in a tight-knit community along with the Filberts, the Lewises, the Critchlows, the Davises, the Richards and the Henrys. Dad was one of the pillars of our church in Hounslow. And I remember the days of being the first one to church and the last one to leave as he was a deacon and he took his role seriously, much to my chagrin at times. He also did a lot for us as young people, running pathfinders, youth um, socials, church camps. Again, so many good memories, allowing me to develop some great friendships that I've maintained to this day. Finally, in 1994, after, what, 1960 to 1994, that's five years, my dad packed up left England and went back to his beloved Jamaica. Back in the day, everybody came to England for five years. 
to make their fortune and then go back. Well, for dad, it was five years going on 34 years. That was the first time I lost my dad. And I remember it was an emotional time for Julie and I as he packed up and left what we knew as home for his home. On his return, he spent many years as an active member of the Mount Carey Seventh-day Adventist Church right here, as a deacon and also part of the senior citizens community. Having left his grown-up children in England, he also came to Jamaica and became a surrogate father for, again, for a number of young people who spent time living in his home. Kelvin, Avian, Shika, Takashi, Dijon. He was a patient, kind-hearted man. And if I'm honest, I never heard him really speak ill of anyone in a harsh or vindictive way. He was willing to give people the benefit of the doubt. And in talking to my mum just last week, she said that my dad and Uncle Eric were two very similar people in that regard. They'd rather just let things be than cause a fuss. His generous, generous spirit was one of the reasons I think dad was blessed to live almost 30 years after retiring back here in Jamaica. This coming June would have been 30 years since he came back. Our parents spent 61 years, special years together. Last Friday, two days ago, would have been their 62nd wedding anniversary. And my mum is grateful for the many opportunities in life that he provided for her and his family. And I'm certainly grateful for the opportunities he provided for me and for Julie in our lives providing us with opportunities that he never had, but always wanting the best for us, being proud in our achievements. In the past 20 years, my favorite memories were the time the grandparents, all the grandparents came over to Australia in 2007, and then when all of our family was able to come over here in 2018 and spend time with them. Our family has many happy memories of Dad, and I'm sure, as I'm sure do many others. And I'm grateful that these will remain with us as we lay him to rest today. It would be remiss of us not to thank some people who came into Dad's life in his later years and played an important role. David Rickman, Carol and Tony Wallace, and Kamar Stephen, thank you all. Being on the opposite side of the world, we've heard many stories of how blessed my parents have been to have you in their lives. As a family, we'd also like to thank those here and abroad for your messages and your prayers. To Carol Anglin, our cousin, who navigated the complexities and nuances of the various Jamaican regulatory systems needed for today's barrel, thank you so much. We couldn't have done it without you. To Cosmo, you worked behind the scenes to ensure the grave preparation was successful and just wanted to acknowledge you today publicly and let you know that we couldn't have done it without you and we really appreciate you. And to other members of this church, Brother Staples, Brother Samuels, thank you so much for all that you do for our parents. Now in the twilight of my father's life as health began to falter, Two remarkable women emerged as pillars of strength and compassion. Bernice Jones, affectionately known as Maggie, Audrea Robinson, they became invaluable to our family during this challenging time. I vividly recall a moment of sheer helplessness when my mum suffered a fall fracturing her hip and my father's health was also in decline amidst the, COVID, uh, the backdrop of COVID pandemic. With my sister and I stranded across the globe, Maggie and Audrea stepped in and without hesitation and they embodied the true meaning of selflessness and support. Their unwavering dedication knew no bounds, tending to my parents' needs with grace and proficiency and becoming beacons of comfort in a time of uncertainty. When I finally managed to return to Jamaica after the lifting of the COVID restrictions, seeing the genuine care and devotion radiating from these two two extraordinary women filled me with a profound gratitude and importantly, peace of mind. Maggie and Audrea, through their kindness, gentleness and boundless generosity have left an indelible mark on our hearts and our family's story. Their tireless efforts and unwavering commitment have not only eased the burden of caregiving, but have also enriched our lives in ways we could never fully express. 
We are forever indebted to them for the love and care they showed my parents and our family. And not forgetting Miss Pauline Grant, who stepped in when Sister Robinson was away on holiday. Thank you. To family residing overseas that I haven't seen in such a long while, it's uh, along with some new faces, uh, it's really wonderful seeing you. Um, to those online who are watching, thank you so much. Beresford Malcolm, Dad. A, short, a man short in stature, but a giant in our eyes. And we're fortunate to be able to stand on the shoulders of that giant in forging our own journeys through life. During his life, he impacted so many people, both young and old, and left a legacy that I'll be honored if I'm able to match. As we bid farewell to him, may his memory continue to inspire us to live with kindness, generosity, compassion, and unwavering determination. We find comfort in the promise of the resurrection that he held dear. Dad had unwavering faith in the resurrection, and that faith allows us to mourn for a while, but find peace in knowing that he will see his saviour on the resurrection morning. Rest peacefully, dear Dad. We love and respect you. Your legacy will forever inspire us to be better versions of ourselves. Rest, Rest peacefully. That was, uh, that was beautiful. What do you say? It was really wonderful. I hear the Bible says, the memory of the just is blessed. Those who have lived for God, there is a streak of beauty that remains from them. And I just want to give my condolences on behalf of my wife and myself to the family members mine was the my task is to introduce this person uh, who is speaking but I just want to put in my little piece I have been privileged um, since I'm here to have gone by him might have been twice in terms of the communion service and I I do concur with the rest that he was a man of short statue but of a magnanimous heart he was big and broad and it is evident by the things that have been said about him and personally as a past as the pastor i not very often i am very happy at funerals because sometimes when members passed on and individuals passed on there is some amount of anxiety that is resident inside of me actually wondering god have they made it and you know but you know that is kind of natural for us uh, when it comes to brother beris brother malcolm based on my interaction and based on what i've gleaned from sister loris the man was actually prepared before death for death even in his very posture um it's been told that maybe a day or two before he was position he has positioned himself in the posture for death and he reminds me of the apostle paul that i am no ready i am no ready but mine is a task to to introduce the person who was before me and is preferred to speak and he had more history a better history in depth um, if you please about brother malcolm than myself he is no other than the executive secretary of the West Jamaica Conference, Pastor Vincent Rose, and one who has pastored here. And in fact, while I sat there, and in my ignorance, I tried to ask him to fill me in on some persons or faces that I would have seen. And he was um, very much good at that. And of course, it speaks to the fact that um, he knows more than I what I do. 
So it is my joy and privilege to present to you the, the person who will speak cogently to us and who will wrap up everything together and give the comfort and challenge if you please. But before he comes, the Anglin's family will pave the way and bless our hearts. Thank you. After which, it will be the man of God, Pastor Vincent Rose. Tears often fall on my face in sorrow as I walk on through the long, lonely nights. Often I cry when it seems no one hears.
church hold on my child joy comes in the morning I hope that we will live in anticipation of that great morning let me allow me I've been blessed I've been blessed by the program thus far the grand celebration of a life blessed by God and there is much to be thankful for and we must never fail to give God thanks for his goodness because he has been faithful God has been good to us I have it's not often that I'm called to speak at a funeral service of someone who had been married for longer than I've been alive. It's 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 a great blessing. And uh, the, the truth is, as I I came and I looked at it, I, I came here some years ago, and uh, at the time, Sister Malcolm was still serving in the community services department, and even if not by election he was the associate here and there wherever she went he was a constant uh, a family in ministry and we pray that god will continue to uphold you and strengthen you i i, I looked sister malcolm i looked at the picture a pretty girl man and he's not looking too bad himself and uh, I, there, I, I don't know if you noticed, there is something about short men. They are bold. They are bold towards the beautiful. But whatever, you, whatever he said, I'm happy he said it. Because we are seeing the results today. We give God thanks. And I uh, really want to express... Uh, and for, of, of, all the, of all the things that he liked, boxing and wrestling, uh, when they, someone gave a tribute, uh, the, 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 a former tribute, I, as I listened, uh, using the cricketing analogy, I said to myself, wow, I thought Brian Lara and Tendulkar and Bradman were good, but this guy is, but then, but then the, the message came home that it's not about the wicked it, 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 it's not about the earth the wicked that he's playing on because even if you make a century on earth we are not batting for century the earthly batsman his goal is to make a century and double century we are aiming for eternity and so we, we pray that God will continue to uphold you, to strengthen you, and to remind you that no matter who is taken, God is the only constant. And he has promised us that he will never leave, never forsake. And in that, we can be thankful. Today, my words will be brief. I'm aware of the time. I'm going to talk to you about the intruder father in heaven speak now your servant 
is willing. Your listeners are attentive. Grant us heaven's desire, for we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. And I shorten it by, by saying this. A few years ago, maybe two decades, almost two decades ago, I decided I wanted a place to call my own. And I heard of a place. When I went to the spot, I could not believe my eyes. Because in order to get to the lot, I had to have a machete man walking ahead, cutting a path. But when you want to have a place, every place seemed acceptable. And so we decided and we bought the, 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 the lot. Not long thereafter, having completed the habitable area, we moved in. One man came to look for me. And he said, Pastor, you live at Cajun Corner? Baffled, I want you to know what is this. It's the first I'm hearing about it. He said, Pastor, to come around here, you must have occasion. It was not fenced. God was my only security. And when you have him, you don't need much more. So, there was some, this particular day in question. I came home, and there was a lady at my house. And she said, while you guys were out, a visitor came. He just walked into the yard and started to pick what he wanted to pick. I'm talking about an intruder. And there is something about an intruder. An intruder leaves you feeling vulnerable. Feeling tentative. Feeling violated even. Because you see, Intruders do not need invitation. Intruders are not welcome. As a matter of fact, when the intruder comes, the intruder takes what they want and then they leave. They need no permission. And so not long thereafter, I got a fence erected and the Lord blessed me with an 80 pound Rottweiler. I never saw nor heard of the intruder again. My friends, death is an intruder. Unwelcome, needs no permission, does not make an announcement of when he is passing through. But when he leaves, he removes the stuff that we value. And he leaves us in tears. He leaves us feeling vulnerable. He leaves us feeling a sense of loss. And the question is, and, and the truth is, though we, 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 there is no fence you can erect to keep death out, he is a wily intruder. He leaves us in sorrow and grief, pain and loss. We feel alienated. We feel our dreams are crushed. He leaves us in financial debt. He, he leaves us in emotional uh, upheavals. Death is an unwelcome guest. And it does not. There is no breed of dog that you can get to keep him out. Ecclesiastes 1 4 says, One generation passes away, another comes, but the world, the world, the world, the earth abideth. My friends, we are told that this intruder came in. Listen, listen. My house was, my home was vulnerable. The intruder did not have to find any way, any particular place to enter. Death comes at any time, any place, anyhow. Paul reminds us that he came through he came through a door called death called sin 
by one man sin entered the world and death by sin we are giving thanks today for the life of brother Malcolm he lived a long life the psalmist reminds us in Psalm 90 that God, that, that there is an appointed time, maybe 70 years, and sometimes by reason of strength, we may live longer. God made him a strong man. Can you believe it? That when brother Malcolm was born, it was before World War II. There was no penicillin, no jet engine, frozen food was not yet invented, the photocopier was not around, the polar, Polaroid came in and went out in his lifetime, the electronic microscope was not yet invented, there was no parking meter, not even FM radio, God gave him a long life and for that we are thankful. But the truth is, church, no matter how long we live, the intruder is always a lurking. We are told in the scriptures that Jared lived for 962 years, but still he died. Methuselah lived for 969, but still he died. No matter how long or how well we live, the intruder is always around. Hebrews chapter 9 says it is appointed oh yes this is an appointment that we need that we have to keep it is appointed unto man wants to die but after death after bad light there is another inning to be played and if you have not played the first one right your name will not be on the team sheet for the second innings that we're together church we are reminded that death came as a result of sin but I, I, because because I, you, you know there's a text that, that, that Job, 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 Job said to us that the man that is born of a woman, I'm always fascinated by that passage. It says it's of a few days and it is full of trouble. And every time I reflect on this text, I said to myself, nothing could be more true. And I'm going to say something to young brother Malcolm. I wasn't there. But on the day you were born, the first thing you felt was a slap. Few days and full of trouble. You had not yet stolen any milk, nor sugar, nor... But you got a slap full of trouble at school slap at work passed over for promotion slap everywhere we turn for those who are in England everywhere you turn Makajokyo life is like this and even though you surrender your life to Jesus the intruder still comes but I want someone to understand that in the book of God all death is not the same there are those and, and friends hear me hear me hear me we in the book of God we are not separated by cause of death we are separated by the lives that we live because he says he says into John the, through John the Revelator blessed are those who die in the Lord long after they die the memory of them continue to testify of the goodness of God hear me today my friends you can't get a rottweiler to keep this intruder out but if you live your life for Jesus he is able to raise a family
defense and keep you safe. So even when death rattles you, Jesus says, after you are gone, people will testify of his grace that worked through your life. But there is a passage that I don't want to close without putting before us. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 25 to 26, God has given us a promise. He has said, look, there is nothing that you can do to keep this intruder out. So God says, the promise is, he says, listen, one of these days, even the intruder called death itself shall die. I want you to know, my brothers, my sisters, my friends who are here, I want you to understand that the government can provide your security against death. Our doctors can provide any security against death. No matter how you live, no matter what you eat, no matter who you are, death is in an intruder. But God has promised us that he is able and one day he himself shall destroy this intruder called death. Mm. and so he says let not your heart be troubled don't be afraid don't fear death because one of these days the trumpet of God will sound he said listen you may have reason to, 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 to care. You, you may have reasons to be troubled. You may have reasons to feel afraid. But he says, do not allow fear to, to, to take over your life. Understand this, that I have set a limit that death itself cannot pass. And the promise has been given to us today. The one day this mortal shall put on immortality this 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 frail frame shall one day incorruption shall be removed death will be no more brothers sisters and friends I am looking forward to the day when the intruder called death will be no more. And Psalm 27, the last verse, says, don't be anxious. Be patient. Today, you will lose your husband. Today, you will lose your father your uncle your, your relative but he says be patient wait on the lord be of good courage don't allow the intruder to keep you awake at night awake at night in nervousness be of good courage because understand this the protector of your life is the one who is able to defeat the intruder called death and i pray that by god's grace you will live with this hope and for those who have not yet surrendered to jesus remember this and I leave this simple message with you. Anything that we put our hopes in will fail us. May I say this to you? The fence that I have erected can be torn down. The dog has a pain threshold. But my God is always on the job. My God is able to take care of me. And the good news is that my God is also able to take care of you. Amen. So put your life in his hands. 
because ultimately he is the one who will destroy the intruder called death Okay, having listened to the encouraging word that with the intruder there is an interceptor this time I ask the family members to stand as we have a special word of prayer for you all the family members to stand at this time that's bow our heads for prayer dear loving gracious heavenly father we are so grateful that with the intrusion of death there comes the interceptor jesus christ we are so grateful that you have shown your love and your power for us and that you have offered to us eternal life we have family members in particular experiencing bereavement of the passing of brother Malcolm memories are there space is no more the face will be no more but thank you for the memories and now Lord we ask that with the future beckons to us we pray that you will instill within them that hope that is only in Christ we pray that you will build them around we pray that you will flood their minds with the rich memory of this man who would have lived for you. May his blessedness continue to soothe and massage their minds and thoughts. And may it be an inspiration. Lord, we look forward for the day of resurrection where all the saints shall come forth from the grave. May Brother Malcolm be one of them. And may all of us unitedly May we shout your praise and may we shout and say, O oh, death, where is your sting? And O oh, grave, where is your victory? Until then, we ask that you will just keep us safe, true, faithful, focus. In Jesus' name, amen. This time we will prepare to make our exit. So we will ask the Paul bearers to come forward and we, the song is there. Um, okay, so while at the singing of the first stanza, um, the platform party will position themselves along with the Paul bearers. information bit of information here after the burial the, the repast will be held on the other side of the church the opposite we have the car park so please remember that uh, having finished the burial that's where we will converge thank you so much as we see the preparation to
Thank you.